And welcome to far, far too early in the morning with far too little coffee and too much wind. Lots of downed sticks back here and a few unstable trees. Turns out we missed a much nicer camping area. Well, dispersed camping area by about 30 feet in the dark, but this is why I generally don't like setting up in the dark. And welcome back to four hours later, if you round up as well, four and a half hours of sleep, maybe. <laughs> I'm a little bit happier. I've had two cups of coffee. They tasted lovely. I am focusing on the positive. Taters is currently wondering what she did wrong in a past life to justify having to walk across Kansas. She is seriously the unsung hero of uh, this trip though, because she wakes up early and isn't real happy, but she makes me coffee. And me being a contrarian, when she is like sobbing quietly because it's four o'clock in the morning and we haven't had much sleep, that just activates me feeling way, way more happy. Versus if it was just me out here alone, I would just be sad and wanting to go back to sleep. As near as we can tell, that storm we were seeing off in the distance last night did not hit us. We, were, we did go to sleep rather quickly and we were uh, sleeping the sleep of the dead. Granted, we were both out pretty quick. It was unfortunately probably one of the more miserable nights. It was kind of shades of Louisiana last year. It wasn't as hot as that. I mean, Louisiana, it wasn't getting below mid eighties, but it was 78 and I went to sleep sweating, woke up sweating. And of course we are kind of more limited on water here because we just have what we have. Uh, we kept an extra bottle when some trail angels visited us the other day, so. We were left carrying, you know, five liters of water plus drinking what we could. And we have about a liter and a half or less each left this morning. We can't be knocking on people's doors pre-dawn, but we are hoping to run into somebody and get more and be able to properly hydrate. I had some hope that farm folks would be up early and we might be able to beg some more water, but oh well. Also, we have what seemed like eternal storms to the south of us. They were there last night, and they're there this morning. Now that is halfway pretty. This early in the morning, it's easy to fool ourselves into thinking, oh, maybe the weather's better, maybe it's going to be halfway habitable today, but... I mean, technically, it does show it only getting up to 99 instead of like 106, so. But that is tomorrow, we still have to survive today, which as of yesterday was supposed to be even hotter than yesterday. So we were hoping to say hi and see about getting some water here, but uh, we don't wanna knock on anybody's door too early. So sadly. I'm going back and forth on the wells a bit. I mean, we are still in very much farming land. We had a conversation with that family yesterday who said, oh yeah, we, we wouldn't give you the tap water. It's probably okay for us, but you wouldn't be used to it. And then they brought us a bunch of bottled water. Now, as it turned out, we had just drank about a gallon out of their hose a few hours before, but you know, they said that the wells around here are not deep enough where the nitrates haven't made it down into the water table. I seem to recall that was the whole blue baby syndrome thing probably not going to hurt us in the short term, but I am always worried about getting enough where I'm just kind of like water sick, like whatever happened way over on the CNO and losing time. Not to mention being, you know, more miserable than we have to be. So my preference is to ask at farmhouses, say we're looking for drinking water and go with whatever they offer us then versus the cattle troughs for a little longer. He was highly entertained by what we were doing. Per him, this well up here should be good water if we filter it. Wasn't quite consistent as far as what he was saying about the pesticides and whatnot, but... Oh, well. They just fence bloody everything in this state. <laughs> I am looking forward to Colorado just to get away from that. And in this episode of Masticator Says America, Blondie is going to demonstrate how to get tetanus. Or get shot by a farmer.
That was actually our first time using a brand new water filter that we got way back on the Katy Trail. <laughs> Thanks, Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, haven't uh, had an opportunity to actually filter water, get water out of somewhere else other than a faucet tap since then. There's a few faucet taps we maybe should have filtered out of, but eh. We had about 10 cars come by while Jen was over the fence. We uh, didn't have many people stop. One guy stopped, seemed to get kind of angry, grumbled to himself and said, like, you have to be careful out here or something like that. The uh, first guy we talked to indicated it was fine to go and get water, so who knows. We still have a lot of farming fields. I would feel better if it was more cows and less farms, just as far as water quality. And now that we've dilly-dallied and burned a little bit of the cool morning time, we are going to make best time towards Dodge City. We think we are going to get in there tonight. We don't think we can get to any of the hotels because they are on the wrong side of town. And it is going to be a bit of a stretch with a midday siesta. But we think we're going to be close enough where stealth camping last night may not be a good option. So we're going to check RV parks, churches, fire department and see what we can find. Oh, if we could just stay at this temperature, we'd be doing all sorts of miles. So after all the back and forth on the grid yesterday, today is basically a straight shot into the outskirts of Ford, which we probably aren't gonna go into because the only restaurant and everything is off trail. And then it's another long straight shot into Dodge. And yes, I already checked the get the heck out of Dodge does in fact refer to Dodge City, Kansas due to the fact it was kind of a dangerous place back in the old West days. And also apparently the windiest city in the United States, which after yesterday we are uh, not doubting in the slightest. We do wish we were a few miles closer to Dodge. That would make it a little bit easier to get set up and find a campsite, but we are really butting our head just against not enough hours in the day here. You know, we're sleeping three or four hours at a time, and that, that is just hard to run on, as Jen will tell you quite passionately. We could have left yesterday morning a little earlier, but that would have cut us short on sleep. The siesta was basically, we couldn't have cut that on either side. We already pushed it into the really hot part of the day, and when you're in the you know, 105 range, you don't really want to screw around with that. And then last night we got to the point at 10.30, 11 o'clock, and it's like, well, we can keep going for another hour, but then it's gonna be harder to get up in the morning because we're only gonna have like four hours of sleep at best. I do really wish that the midday siesta naps were a little more restful. Unfortunately, even Jen couldn't sleep yesterday. We were just getting battered by the wind nonstop. Yes, yes. Big scary dog. Every time I turn my back, he comes at me and he was actually snarling. He got fairly close. Unfortunately, I don't think we have the time to spare to go in and eat at the cafe. We only have so many hours of daylight that we can actually hike in these days. Ten thirty. If we could make it another ten miles before our siesta, there is actually a co-op meeting we could probably get cold drinks to get us through the uh, hot part of the afternoon. However, I am a little concerned about making it that far since it is supposed to be in the uh, you know, 107 range again. And two o'clock has been well into the regretting life choices portion of the day. Yeah, 
and yeah, the mighty Arkansas is still just a trickle. Okay, this has had big truck traffic, and I was starting to get concerned, but <laughs> fortunately, looks like we're on the quiet dirt road. Okay, technically the wrong side of the fence, but we have options under different aspects, so I think this is our siesta. That's the road over there. So the worst thing about this has actually, other than the b flies, which are occasionally biting, is we've been chased around by the sun. We started out over there, had to move around, came over here, we're over there, and we've just had to move. Okay, so in addition to the heat index being atrocious, it is uh, not cooling down until a little bit later. So it's 7.30, and we're just going to hop back over the fence and get going. So that worked. I mean, I successfully got us out of the sun right as... The heat was getting bad, but that was the worst of the siestas so far. We couldn't set the tent up. There wasn't enough shade for that. Plus it was so hot. You kind of boil inside, but there were just a ton of flies. Middle of the afternoon, I was getting covered with them and very occasionally one of them would be a biting fly. So the rest was kind of extra, less than restful. And we keep having to move every I don't know, hour or so as the sun was traversing and the shade was moving. And all of a sudden, wake up soaking with sweat and kind of dappled shade instead of the full shade. Jen said she actually slept a little better just because uh, we weren't getting hit by wind quite as bad as yesterday. <laughs> Personally, I'll take the uh, heavy wind yesterday in exchange for no flies plus having more water. We basically only had the water left over from that... Uh, cattle trough earlier today and now that's pretty much all gone during the siesta there was a spot we could have asked for water about 0.7 ahead but we didn't know if we were going to find shade and there is the amount of water i can get by on and then there is the amount of water that helps me cope with the heat relatively well and uh, i'm more the former than the latter unfortunately planning wise things were a little bit of a mess we're gonna be into Dodge City late, obviously. The hotels are way across town. So we found an RV place uh, for 20 bucks and we're gonna go set up there tonight is the plan. So we just have to make another 10 miles or so to that. Uh, we were hoping to do another partial day into a hotel, you know, hike early in the morning and then uh, break in the evening, kind of recover. But uh, Cimarron doesn't seem to have anything available. <laughs> We had this whole plan where we were going to leave Dodge City at like 3 o'clock in the morning and we thought we could make it to Cimarron and then uh, stay in a hotel in the afternoon and evening and then leave early the next day, kind of similar to what we did back there at that last town. But as of right now, they don't have any openings. The owner said maybe people check out tomorrow, so we might, but we're not going to wake up on two or three hours of sleep and hike 25 miles only to get stuck in the heat of the day in a town with nowhere to stay. So I think our plan is to just kind of keep on, keep on like we've been doing. Garden City is another 50 miles past that, I think. And there's that's the next chance for a hotel. Right at the moment, we have a little less than half a liter of water to our name. So we are uh, gonna have to track something down. Hooker Crook. You can see there's another storm off to the side. We did have one little thunder thing come over us. Gave one good crack, dropped a couple of drops, not near enough, and then it was gone. Okay, feeling slightly less close to death at the moment. Um, we went off trail a short ways because we saw a house and uh, they had a dog. It was a uh, rather loud dog. So we just sat there till the lady came out. She didn't quite seem to know. She seemed a little wary of us, said they don't see a lot of people out here. And we're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> but she gave us a cup of ice water that uh, was amazing. Sadly, it was just one cup of ice water. But it shall be remembered fondly. 
So we have our full five liters filled and we wanted to uh, get out of their hair because like I said, she was seem, seeming a little wary. Probably Jen, Jen has that wild look in her eyes, the, the frizzle. So one of the places we called in Cimarron is a historical hotel, which may or may not have like a single Airbnb suite, but doesn't seem to work as like a normal hotel, more of like a historical attraction. Well, they have a history of letting ADT hikers stay there because anybody who has that good a story, they will accommodate and they just called us back. So they say they're going to be there tomorrow. So it looks like our plan is going to be to get the hell out of Dodge pre-pre-dawn, like walk out in headlamps at three in the morning, try and do the 23 miles or so to Cimarron, get there by noon, one o'clock when things get bad and then jump into their room and sleep the afternoon away. So if you're finding this on our bodies after we were mugged trying to walk through uh, Dodge City at 3 a.m., this would be why. So we have a plan and the plan involves not a lot of sleep. Again. And it's just looking like it's going to be another humid evening out here. Maybe we're going to get that tornado you wanted! Per the radar, there is some massive storm over there. Seems to be headed away from us, which is good. We can't really afford to waste any more time. Here's the co-op. Jen was hoping we would make it to for uh, siesta. Unfortunately, we still have a little over an hour to go. This is going to be a rough night. Slash tomorrow morning. We're basically going to take a $20 nap at this RV place and then try and push the simmer on. Because we just got upgraded in our room if we can make it there before the heat. Oh, <laughs> we just had the popo check on us. Again. This never happened to me before, Jen. I think it's you. Almost there. No more police visits, but I did have one truck who uh, sure as hell seemed like he was swerving over and aiming at me. And welcome to the Water Sports Camping RV Park. I'm wondering why the lens is so fuzzy. It has gotten really, really humid again, which is funny because we actually finally crossed the actual hundredth meridian. We got into camp around 12.30. Still took the time to make our beans and rice because that's the most substantial food that we have and we need some substantial food. And we're going to settle in for about a two hour nap or so um, until we get up really early. And our goal is to get to the town of Cimarron before the midday heat kicks up tomorrow, uh, get a hotel and get ourselves some rest there. So really rough morning but at least we'll get some rest in the afternoon. Crazy schedule. Home sweet home for the night. 